Why am I upside down? Well, l let me explain. Jared Poland Frono's photo. Uh, Dot com and yeah, I'm upside down. So Steven, can you flip me back over? In this video, I wanna show you how I needed to get creative in order to get these shots of these big Tusker elephants when I was in Amboseli Park in Kenya. Now you might think I just shot those photos the normal way that I would. Get down low, compose the shot, get my exposure, and take the photo, but that wasn't the case. Now let me rewind this a little bit. I was in Kenya for two weeks on a safari. And in the first part of it, the first couple of days, we were spending in Amboseli, which is a national park where Mount Kilimanjaro should be in the background. Except for the fact that for the first two days that we were there, you could not see Mount Kilimanjaro in the background. Now, when we set out at 6 a.m. on our third and final morning, we saw that Mount Kilimanjaro was beautiful and big in the background and we were chasing big tusker elephants. Those are those elephants that are related to mammoths. They still have some of their DNA in them, and they have the largest tuskers in the world, and there's about 25 of them left. Now, the idea was, how can we capture one of these elephants with Mount Kilimanjaro in the background? One of the biggest challenges is that we're in a land cruiser. Now that puts us up higher because in a national park, you're not allowed to get out of the vehicle. So where I was sitting in the back row, I'm at eye level with the elephant or up too high that I can't get that unique angle. It ends up looking amateurish. So knowing this before we went out for the morning, I had the idea all by myself. It was actually an idea that the other shooters on the trip had. They would attach their camera to a monopod, hold it outside the vehicle, flip the screen up so that they could see it, and use a remote to trigger it. Now this did a few things. This allowed them to get a lower, more unique angle where it would make the elephant or the subject look larger and gave them the potential of getting better images that were more professional looking than amateurish. Because a lot of times when you shoot at higher angles, it just looks like a snapshot and this allowed them to get low. So I was like, well, I wanna take on this challenge. How could I do it from where I was sitting? So I attached the R3 to a monopod with the 85 1.2. So we're talking about $10,000 worth of gear that I'm hanging outside of the back of the vehicle while it's moving and we're trying to find the right angle and I'm looking down while using the Canon Connect app. I don't know if it's taking pictures, I don't know if I have my focus right because I'm shooting at 1.2 because I want to get the isolation of the elephant if it gets into position. And that's one of the challenges. You can't go off road to chase the elephant. So you can't be like, hey, Mr. Elephant, Big Tusker, can you stand right here for a couple minutes while I get the best angle? You basically have to follow it as it goes down the road and hope that it doesn't cross the road because on the other side, you don't have Kilimanjaro. So the point of this video is to tell you that sometimes you need to think outside of the box. You need to use the technologies that these cameras offer you to allow you to get the shot that you envision in your mind. Because if I didn't put the monopod out of the vehicle and hang it low, turn it upside down, which everything I'm seeing is upside down. Oh, except I could, I could actually turn my phone the other way so I could see it right side up. I wouldn't have gotten the shots that you saw at the very beginning. But now I wanna jump into the computer to show you the final images that I got. Now, right here, we see that I have 584 selected because I had to take a lot to try and get the best results. We started around seven in the morning where we encountered the big Tusker elephants and it went on for about 38 minutes of shooting. So 584 images edited down to basically one, two, three, uh, four of my favorites. So let's start off with this. And I want to explain this real fast. I didn't know that I had this image until right before we made this video and we're over a month since I've been back. Yeah, because sometimes you take so many pictures and when you're editing them and going through them, you don't realize what you have until you look at it with fresh eyes. And that's one of the reasons you keep all of your raw files. I know some people will edit down to what they think are their best of the best with honor, sir, and then get rid of all of the raw files that they think they don't need but I've never done that. I've kept every single raw file that I've ever taken, and the reason I do that is I might just go back and be happily surprised that I found something that I would have missed if I deleted it 
just like this image right here. And I didn't realize I had Mount Kilimanjaro here bright in the background with these multiple elephants, this herd right there. So that could be a great shot unto itself. So this one was done at 712. Now, the idea is we have to get the elephants moving. We have to wait until they get into a position or the big tusker gets into a position to allow us to get Kilimanjaro there. Let me jump in here real quick and say, would you like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations? Well, if you said yes, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Here was the major challenge. Sometimes the vehicle is moving because we're trying to get the best angle because we don't know when the elephant is going to stop. I'm hand holding upside down that $10,000 worth of gear with one hand. I've got one hand on the monopod and I've got one hand holding the phone and trying to change my exposure as well as take the picture when it's ready and also trying to get the focus locked onto the elephant. I will tell you that the R3 lock on tracking 1.2 even with the moving vehicle was great. The biggest issue was trying to get my line straight and my level straight while all doing it with one hand. This is what it looked like. I know the comments are gonna light up when you see this, but this is exactly what it looked like. I'm holding, I'm gripping, I'm rotating, I'm moving up and down. It is, there, there's no way around it. That's what I was doing. But I used the running board of the vehicle to, to either rest the camera or to see where the level and line was straight. I know a lot of people would have cropped after the fact and just been like, I'll just crop it later. I didn't have to crop it later. I got my lines perfectly straight with Kilimanjaro in the background. Now, I don't think that this is the best image with honors, sir. I think it's a good shot. I think the next one might have been the best opportunity for a great shot. But when I was shooting it, I had no idea where Kilimanjaro was. My settings, 1 hundredth of a second, F 1.2 at 100 ISO, which is base. I had no idea why, while looking at my phone that Kilimanjaro was there because I'm exposing for the elephant and the sky was blown out slightly and I just, I just couldn't see it. I didn't know it was there and that's why it's cut off partially here because I just was like, I'm looking for the elephant. But let me show you something. I'm gonna go into develop real quick because I wanna show you the before and the after. This is the before. You can barely see that Mount Kilimanjaro is there. But after running it through one of our presets and tweaking the background and tweaking the sky ever so slightly, this is where it ends. And this is why we shoot raw. It's one of the reasons we shoot raw. And no, the excuse that people will make is, well, you should have gotten it right in the camera. I got my exposure very good in the camera. There's no way that you would be able to bring back a JPEG to this, to this extent. This bringing the sky back is tremendous. It, 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 it's balanced, it looks great, and one of the warnings is don't go too far. If you make a sky look too fake to what the scene would have been, people are gonna know. They're gonna know. They'll know. And that's why I always shoot raw. Now, let me also tell you one of the other things you need to figure out, black and white or color. I've got these two images right here. Do I like the black and white, or do I like the color better? And that is one of those things, I'll leave it to you guys. Do you like the color or the black and white? Let me know down below. Sometimes I find that the black and white is better and other times I find that the color is better. But I decided to go with the color. I just felt that the color was my favorite of the bunch because it just, it just feels better. This would have been my favorite shot because I love how the elephant is looking at me. Look at the size of those tusks. Gorgeous. Oh, and by the way, the elephant isn't peeing. They are in heat. And so these are pheromones for the female elephants to know that, hey, look at me. If, if their penis was out, you would know their penis was out. This is just musk happening. But I love this because of the angle. The straight on shot is great. I love that we have out of focus foreground elements that make it seem like I'm lower. That was the whole point of putting the monopod outside of the vehicle. And even at 1.2, you still know it's Mount Kilimanjaro in the background. But the fact that I cut off Mount Kilimanjaro means that it's not the winner shot. It just isn't because it's cut off. When I realized I could see it for the first time on the phone in the Canon Connect app, 
I was able to quickly rotate with my wrist like I showed you earlier to get this composition. Now this stuff happens fast. Let me quickly bounce out here, turn off the five stars so you can see how many shots, the opportunity, let's just go back a little bit. Now these aren't edited, but you can see he's moving. That's not good, he's not looking at me. Not good, not good, not good, not good. Okay, he's starting to turn, he's turning, and you're shooting. And then he's off, and then it's gone. Up. Oh, then he turns and he goes away. He looked for a second. That's how fast this stuff happens. And so would I have loved to have had this a couple of shots prior with where the elephant was? 100% yes but you don't win every time you go out to shoot and you just need to be prepared and be creative and have the proper mindset to think about all of these things that are happening quickly. This stuff happens so fast that you just need to get your settings locked in, you need to know exactly what you plan on doing and then hope the damn app works when you're pressing the button on it. Because there's a bunch of times I took like 20 pictures because I didn't know it was actually shooting because I couldn't hear it and I couldn't tell from the app, some haptic feedback would be great in there. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you this photo of the elephant that I took on Safari, edited with Fropack 4, starting with Blue's Clues. Then we've got Brooklyn, C41, Coppertone, DeLorean, High C, Mel Brooks, Saltwater Taffy, Thick with Three Cs, Tintype, Wet Hot American Summer, and my final edit, which was a tweaked version of Kaleidoscope right here. But I also wanna jump up to Fropack 2 because don't forget we've got Fropack 2 where we've got Matte Black, Harvest Moon, Double Stuffed Oreos, and Cinnamon Toast Crunch, just to name a few. So look, if you wanna speed up your raw workflow, give yourself a great starting point, or you're just tired of other people's presets sucking, Ours don't suck. We created 14 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack4. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters, and if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you wanna save even more, you can get the Grand Slam bundle that has fropack one, two, three, and four. Now, let's get back to the video. So look, I thought there were a lot of teachable moments that came out of this one scene. It was thinking outside of the box, of course shooting raw in a situation where you have a ton of dynamic range or the opportunity to bring things back in post like the sky is highly important. Not deleting everything after you go through your first edits because maybe you'll be pleasantly surprised with something that you missed at the time. But if you wanna see my images from Kenya on my safari, you can go to jaredpoland.com, just click on the photo stories, you can find the images right there under places, and if you'd like to purchase one of these prints, you can go to jaredpoland.com store, where you can purchase some limited edition prints as well. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. I thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Poland, See ya.